We're homeless, living in this tent. Let's talk about it. So, before we start the video, just let me apologise in advance for my absence on the camera. It does feel like a, a good while now since I've actually picked the camera up and started recording anything. But, what I'm about to tell you will probably explain things to you a little better and you'll have a better understanding of why. So, as mentioned previously, we are currently living full-time in the Canvas Bell Tent, supplied very kindly by Ashley over at Canvas Tent Shop. Story goes, so we went away last week uh, for a week's holiday over in sunny Yorkshire on the east coast and we took the bell tent, we enjoyed our time in that, stood up great, we had some winds, bit of rain. Um, coming back from there, we experienced a few events which led up to this point in time, which has um, pretty much left us committed to living in the tent full time. Now I'm not going to go into the reasons why this happened, everyone experiences their own problems and currently we're experiencing ours. Although it has been a pretty profound experience for me and my beautiful partner. Um, it's probably hurt her the most because she is used to her home comforts and having a stable roof over her head. But it is what it is and we've been here now for the past week on a um, farm. Not too far from where we lived previously um, and it's a beautiful place to be fair. Um, honestly I'm built for this you know. I've, I've gained these skills over the years where I can survive in this sort of situation. My missus is experiencing, um, you know, bouts of anxiety and depression, as which can be understood. So our current situation is we have just paid £616 UK um, for a month's rent on this campsite. That includes electric. We have actually just had to go and travel out to our nearest Go Outdoors, which is a sports adventure shop, to get a new gas cylinder and pipe and gas regulator, because the one we had looked like a ticking time bomb from 1940. So we're glad to be rid of that for now. Um, but the place is an absolutely stunning area. We're up in the hills, uh, in the Pennines, and we could, you know, we could be a lot worse off. We both still got our jobs, for what it's worth, we're mine anyway. Um, we're both experiencing difficulties from different aspects of our lives, but it's quiet, and we've got our own freedom back, which is the main thing. So what I'm going to do now is. Uh, take you around the camp, take you around the uh, tent and show you how we're living, what we've got in there. Uh, I'm going to put the gas bottle and regulator together and uh, my missus is going to cook me up a beautiful stew tonight, steak and corned beef ash stew. So, Also ladies and gents, apologies for the attire, I will be back in bushcraft uniform uh, very very soon and the normal and regular uh, content will resume in due course. But for now let's go and check out the camp, check out the tent and see where we're at. Right ladies and gents, so this is not the typical type of gear um, you expect to find on my channel, but needs must and we need to meet the uh, basic necessities to be comfortable uh, in our situation. So we have been to Go Outdoors, which is a sporting adventure shop again, local to us, and we've had to pick up a few bits, um, really with money we haven't got, but you know, like I say, needs must. So we'll start with a picnic table. We had to pick this up for using the gas cooker. Um, on this site we do have gas and we do have electric. We also have nice showers and toilets, so we're not living, you know, like animals. Um, we do have the basic amenities. So we picked up this uh, picnic table, high gear, and this was, I believe, 15 pounds with the membership. You do get discounted um, prices when you pick up the membership with Go Outdoors, which is well worth it. So there's that small table just to hold the gas cooker and maybe for the missus to do some ironing when I'm not doing it because I always do the ironing and the cooking and everything. Also, the folk on the farm who run the campsite were kind enough to lend me their electrical um, hookup, their extension, which is hooked up just behind the caravans, behind the tent here. Um, they've actually put us on this um, field here because they don't really do um, longer stays than six nights with a tent, which is understandable due to the grass, the tent's killing the grass. But, like, like I say, they've really helped us out, they've been really nice with us. And they put us on this backfield because this will be shut down soon for, this, for the end of season. And they don't mind this section of grass getting damaged. And we've got to look at this realistically that we could be here for months on end. Um, currently we are on the housing register for social housing. I spoke to the lady today to try and get the ball moving. Uh, they're waiting for a letter from the emergency housing who I've contacted. This is all very, very embarrassing, um, explaining to you, but I like to be real, you know. There's, it's not just me going through this, there's thousands of people, if not hundreds of thousands, in today's climate. So, 
Um, they're just waiting for a letter from the emergency housing so they can try and knock us up the band to the highest band. And me and the missus, we're only looking for a one bedroom apartment, um, which is suitable for uh, myself and the missus, obviously. So as soon as they get that letter, um, we should be put on band one. We're currently on band two. And speaking to the lady today, apparently just for the Thameside area where I'm from, there's 8,000 applicants already on the uh, housing register. Um, the positive side to that is she said, obviously they're not all looking for one bedroom houses and the one bedrooms are easier to house. Um, although, you know, there's still going to be a substantial wait. So we have to be realistic that we could be here for a long time. So we're going to have to like dig our heels in and just make ourselves as comfortable as possible. Like I say, we could be a lot worse off and there are people out there who are experiencing homelessness and they are in a lot worse um, situation than us. So hats off to you and I hope you find somewhere uh, to rest your head at night at least. So um, we picked this a electrical hookup, a 240 volt sight plug. Uh, this was on sale with the membership again, 25 quid, should have been 95 quid. So that's some bleeding discount now. But um, we can now return the one we have been borrowed by the lovely Adele on the campsite. Um, thank you very much for that. And we've got our own power source there. So this is three mains plugs and then you cut off. And we were very lucky to be able to get a gas canister off a friend. Um, in the short time we had to find somewhere to live. They did supply us with one. Um, we took it down to this shop today to get it refilled. Unfortunately, I think the bottle was older than me. And again, it looked like an explosive IED device from bleeding the 1940s. So <laughs> they were kind enough to let me trade that one in with all the gubbins on it because I couldn't get it off. It was all seized. I tried in the car park with the bleeding. My grandfather's Brook small axe trying to knock the spanner and get it off. Little did I know, uh, if I had just read the side here, it would have said tighten the opposite way. Um, so I pretty much hammered it, seized, shut, and then rounded the bolt off. Yeah. So we've got a brand new bottle, um, the same size we traded in, and we've also bought a uh, the regulator. The one we did trade in had a pressure, um, like a, a fill gauge, so the only thing with this one, we're not going to know how much we've got left. But that's brand new, should be nice and safe. Um, and I can hook this up inside the bell tent for cooking indoors on the table if uh, it's rainy or very, very windy. We've got some circlips as well and some pipe to fit. So let's do that now. Now, believe it or not, I have never actually fitted one of these myself. When we've done family camps in the past, we've usually used these small gas uh, propane, you know, efforts that you replace the gas cartridge in, in the side. But we have used, we have had the use of the old gas canister in the last week and it has been a godsend. So, all right, this looks very, very simple. I suppose I could be using some PTFE tape or some sort of uh, grease or something, just so this does not seize. But the other one was brass on brass, which is probably a really, really bad combination. This one looks to be nickel plated steel or something like that. So, um, see, I'm doing it again. It's reverse thread. Why, why would someone do that? I literally mashed this with a spanner and the back of my grandfather's brooks. Um, and no one came out to tell me I was doing it wrong. Now we have got a spanner for that, which is in the motor, which we'll get in a minute. Um, next we've got some sear clips. So this should just fit on the front. And the pipe, I must say, is in a lot better. Should I be doing this off the actual... Uh... So I don't want to over tighten this because I don't want to be in the same situation I was at the shop embarrassing myself, not telling everyone that I actually um, smashed it the wrong way and tightened it and seized it, but that's how I got it. So now we know. There we go. Right. That seems all good. And now we just need to connect this to the gas stove. I'm going to do the little nut up with the very handy Victorian Ox, which has been absolutely indispensable on the camp and now on the permanent camp holiday. <laughs> I highly recommend you get one of these because they are, um, again, very, very handy. Which way is this way? There we go. 
That'll do. The rope made that was easy. Um, this is a camping gas gas stove. Again, not something we usually use even on the camping holidays. We usually use the uh, small square um, stoves, but this one's got a toaster, um, two gas rings, so it's been very, very convenient. And it's got the electronic igniters as well, so easy start. So, I got way too much line. Um, never mind. Don't use this in the either as that is. Just put the knob up. And uh, if everything goes well. should have gas hey beautiful wonderful life sustaining gas right. that's that done So, welcome to our canvas abode. We'll start off in the kitchen area. This is where we keep all our utensils, pots, pans, plates. Um, kettle, which we're using, is the Winnerwell stainless steel coffee percolator. Makes a great kettle. I have a waste bin just at the side, and then we have a tub at the bottom with all the spices in, and then a couple of containers um, containing all our coffees, foods, dry foods and things like that. These are gonna be great for making little curries and things like that on the uh, Winnerwell fire pit when the weather's nice enough. It has just started raining. So that is the kitchen area. We have some lovely um, Captain Morgan and some of my favourite Lucky Sod Irish Toffee Whiskey, which I'll be sipping on in a little while. We've also been using the Coleman Sportman stove. Um, this has been fantastic every morning getting the kettle going. Um, really enjoyed using that stove. Let's move on. So in an effort to retain some warmth in the tent and to preserve the ground sheet, which is a 540 GSM um, ground sheet. It is pretty hard wearing, but again, just to preserve that and retain some warmth in the tent. We've put a few uh, floor coverings down. We've got a natural cotton one here. We've got a hard wearing one for the front for walking in and out. Um, we've got a couple of plush rugs, just like this one here. And we've got a nice sexy green one over there the other day from B&M's for £20. Um, again, walking on these, just like walking at home on a carpet. Very nice. Oh, 20 quid for this little beauty. I could sleep on this. This here, guys, is the Mrs. Medicinal um, Cosmetics Laundry. We've got clothes in this and in the car at the minute. Uh, all the shampoos, um, body essentials and all that gubbins. Gubbins, how old am I, babe? How old am I? Um, I'll tell you what, this situation's aged us a little bit, hasn't it? <laughs> Made us a little bit more mature. So, hair dryers, um, hair clippers, facial hair. We have a catch ball, uh, again for when we're in the mood. We have expel wipes and insect repellents because the midges are absolutely rife here. Um, antibiotics because during holiday I decided to go swimming, which I can't do, I can't swim. I did teach myself on one day. I managed a length of the pool um, and some water did get in my ear and that pool was not the cleanest of any any kind. I come back with a lovely ear infection. So that's the second one in about two years. The last one took me about six months to get rid of. I have already finished a course of antibiotics and it has done absolutely nothing. So now I've got right, stuff coming out of my ear and I'm deaf. Plus, I've got a perforated eardrum as well. So uh, I've lost 80% 
have my hearing normal, I'm probably completely deaf now, isn't it? So, anyway, Yankee Candle, a few home comforts from the bedroom at home, just to make her feel a little bit more comfortable. Hey, is it working? Yeah. Yeah? She's very, very camera shy. I will try and persuade her to get on camera um, as we go through this emotional journey of homelessness. We're homeless, babe. No, no, we're houseless. <laughs> Home is wherever you make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I tell you, and it, it's a bit, bit, we we've, we've spoke about this, like everything came to the channel within the last couple of months that we've really utilised um, during this crisis and if it wasn't for the kindness of these companies and people sending us this, this gear to review on the channel, we'd have been up Pooh Street without a paddle. So thank you very much. And it just seems like it was meant to be, wasn't it? It's weird, it's like we've been stayed in this path and hopefully we'll be stayed out of it uh, quick time. I'm back on our feet. But again, we could be in a lot worse situation. Um, I mean, what sort of homeless person has a king size bed in the tent, canvas tent, canvas hot tent, um, which I'll show you now. Oh, this book. So nice, this room here. And then, ladies and gents, we have the bedroom department, which is 25 centimetres away from the cosmetics and laundry department, a metre from the door, and seven centimetres away from the food. This is where all the good stuff happens, like sleeping and reading. Right, ladies and gents, so this area in general is the power station area where we charge all our devices, laptops, phones, things like that. Now if you do follow the channel, you'll know that All Powers very kindly sent me the S300 power unit over. This has been a godsend. Um, we've used this on holiday. No, we didn't use this one on holiday, did we? We didn't take it. But this one has been used um, during our time at this camp. Um, it gives us a nice source of light. This is all Bluetooth, this one. Um, and it gives you an indication of how long this is to recharge. Both of these are solar. Funny story with this one. This is the EB55 from Bluetti. Um, I actually picked this up cheap. Again, it's like it was meant to be. These retail for about £600 anywhere else. Uh, I managed to steal this one for £150, brand new. Uh, along with the four panel solar panel. Um, I think I got that for £180 and they retail for £300. Again, absolute godsend. This one is currently on 40%, but these can be recharged through your car, which we've been doing on days out. Uh, they can also be recharged using the panel. But the good thing with these two here now is when we've got the uh, mains plumbed in, um, instead of bending down and just being able to use the 240, we can actually still use the USBs on these and leave these continuously charging. Um, it's just very, very easy to do. Um, this one does have a light on the back, a nice LED, which we've not used, but um, very, very handy, and again, they have been lifesavers um, for us up until now. Fantastic. We also have in this area my underpants, uh, the Mrs. Knickers socks, um, and it's a bit of a mess at the minute. We also have my green Crocs. Never leave home without your Crocs. Love these things. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Um, and trainers and stuff in this area. We also have a dustpan and brush just to try and keep the debris out of the shelter. Um, again, trying to preserve. Preserve? trying to preserve the um, the flooring so everything is basically budget 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 at the minute it's costing us a lot more to live here than it did in our previous um, dwellings um, again the site is 616 pounds a month but that does include electric um, that gas cylinder we've got today should last us months to be fair we're only using it for pretty much one meal a day um, we're not paying council tax we're not paying a separate gas electricity energy bill um, it's just going to be obviously we've got a lot of stuff in storage now which is costing us monthly uh, I think I've been done over with that so I need to go and see them uh, and we've got the car to run as well which hasn't let us down so far since the breakdown on holiday so fingers crossed um, we're okay for the minute aren't we yeah we're not doing too bad that's a little yeah from my missus oh you might get a full sentence one of these days who knows <laughs> Uh, what are you cooking me for my tea? Now put your ironing board up and your stove together. I've even swept up today. <laughs> yeah, we we need to turn this camera off and have a chat, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Let's love turn this camera off. <laughs> so, ladies and gents, the missus would like to um, share her shopping trip with you today. Uh, while I was in Go Outdoors collecting the necessities, my missus was also 
in Aldi collecting uh, necessities, uh, necessities <laughs> to fill our bellies. So, um, and this thing's I think quite popular in this sort of situation in the current climate. People budgeting for their shopping. So, let's go over what we bought and how much we spent today. Crack on. Um, some Doritos and dip. That is very, very necessity. <laughs> Nothing's a necessity today. Some crumpets. This is our comfort food, you know, time of the month and all that. <laughs> time of the... <laughs> um, some custard and then I got um, a gem roll of to go with it. I got some bagels for here and some bagels for when I go back to work. Some bread, some Viennese whirls. I got some of them because I've seen them on Facebook and they're nice. No wonder we're sharing tea. <laughs> and then I got, um, I was going to make beef stew, so I've got a beef casserole. It is currently raining outside, uh, yeah. so unfortunately um, she doesn't want to cook inside because she doesn't want to stink the tent out, so. We're on Mom cheese and crackers tonight and dry bread, by the looks of it. <laughs> um, and then I got that, obviously, to make with the shoe because I've not got my slow cooker to make my own beef. Um, I Why got... have you left that out, babe? She also <laughs> bought a massive cucumber. <laughs> I, don't know why. I got a bottle of lemonade to go with my oh, um, Captain Morgan's. Yeah. yeah. I did buy a, bottle, a bag of ice, but it's melted. And then, obviously, I got some onions to go with the stew, but I've also got some veg here to go with that but i've bought that yesterday yeah we're trying to save uh, any food that we're cooking with uh, for the next day's food and meals but how much has that lot just cost about eight, 18 pound i think it was we're getting divorced <laughs> i told you five pounds <laughs> stop shouting like that <laughs> everyone's going to think you're being real i know it's, it's well no no we're really not are we? <laughs> this is just a joke <laughs> no we're not being real <laughs> Uh, right, so what are we actually eating? Um, I'll just throw that on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did get some mega puffs as well, but the oh, yeah. bag burst, so Stephen's been e eating them. I've been them. eating these because the bag did um, burst open. So, why not one not? So, that is our current situation, as our situation currently stands. But, despite that, hopes are high, and fingers crossed, um, we will be... Um, our situation will be rectified in short time or due course, whichever comes first. Uh, God only knows truthfully how long we are going to be here, but if he does know, I wish he'd bleed and tell us. Uh, so we can sort ourselves out. But we are a team and we will get through this. What we, babe? Yeah. yeah. Like I say, we are pretty lucky having what we've got and the friends that have actually come out and helped us. Friends that we didn't really spend a lot of time with in the past, which we do. We are very regretful of that now, and the people that you think will help, you know, um, kind of surprise you. So those that have actually dug us out of a hole, thank you from our hearts massively, um, and we, we will be sure to repay the favour in the future. But unfortunately, you know, this isn't an isolated case um, in today's current climate. This is, it's kind of the norm now. Every day you're hearing about more and more people going homeless. Uh, food becoming more and more expensive and people just can't afford to live and in our case you know um, despite where we were living before we couldn't do it we couldn't live um, in a private rented property full time running a car and all that and this is where we've ended up so as long as we budget and we've got each other um, we'll get through it and we will survive and we've got films on the laptop anyway so we're all right have you decided what you're doing for my tea yet you Shit, we should have. Nice. It's like a mate again. Right, hopefully, um, I'm hoping to get out tomorrow and review Josh's knife from Feared Wood Knives. Um, I have been playing with it over the last week and I've been carving a bit of kiln dried wood um, and uh, doing a bit of whittling. And it is a very, very, very nice knife. Very comfortable to use and it is perfect for its design or what it's designed to do. So, fingers crossed, I'll be out tomorrow um, to complete that video. And then I'll be bringing regular updates um, to our situation, but we'll also be reviewing other kits and doing other videos down the road. So stay tuned. If you have only jumped on this video, feel free to check out the other content. Um, this channel is primarily bushcraft, 
outdoors, things like that. Um, and you can't get much more outdoors than this, can you? So this will be testing my bushcraft skills to the max, despite having electricity and gas and heating and canvas tent and all that. Hey babe, what? we're actually on safari. Safari? Yeah. Like safari. Hey, we see there's bleeding deers in the field, fallow deers. A guy walked on camp the other day, just brazenly holding his uh, Gia Falcon, which you would have seen one on the bushcraft show when I did that. A beautiful bird. We've also got, what else have we seen here now? Bats everywhere and midges, loads of midges. All pheasants in the field. It's, um, it's a really, really beautiful wild place and we're surrounded by hills just around the back of us here. So I'll be sure to show you all of that in future episodes of the homeless family. Couple. Couple, yeah. Brilliant. Right, I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe the day after. Right, get my tea on you, I won't tell you again. <laughs>